want to embroider a sweater with me? Hey everyone, Kristen Som here. And our group project, our first group project of 2024 is a little delayed. We're gonna have a little extra time. So I thought what a perfect time to do a small project and get everybody to embroider a sweater. I know everybody loves doing this, so how fun to do it together. And if you haven't taken the jump and tried it, don't worry, give it a try. I will give you all the information. So for now, just gather your supplies. You'll need a sweater if you're in warmer weather. I'm in cold weather, so I'm definitely doing a sweater. Uh, but if you're in warmer weather, you could do a, a shirt by all means, of course. So I actually found a this sweater on Amazon that I'm really excited to do. It's a hoodie and it's lavender and it's so pretty and very Christmassy and has a nice blank front to it to be able to embroider on it. All right, so this one, it's from Amazon. I found it on Amazon and I think it will be just perfect. So I'm gonna add a link here if you want a hoodie. It came in several different colors, really pretty colors. I really, I really like that. I'm excited to embroider on it. So I'll add this link here for you to be able to purchase that sweater. If you don't like um, sweaters with hoods on them and you want just a regular sweatshirt, I have this one that you've seen before probably. I already embroidered on mine, but I'm thinking about getting another one. There's some really pretty colors in this too. So I embroidered, yes, I'm cold, me 24 seven, but this is a great sweatshirt as well. I love the way that it fits. And I found this on Amazon as well. Um, and it came in, I think there was a lavender. I'm not 100% sure about that, but there was a really pretty teal that I really liked a lot. There's also a really pretty green. It's a very different color of green. And what else? There was a light pink and this really vibrant pink. I love this, of course. So lots of fun options. I'll add a link here. This is for the sweatshirt that does not have a hoodie on it. All right, so this one that I'm wearing right now, you can find that on Amazon as well. And then for um, a shirt, I'll add some links underneath the video of some that I have used before that I really like. So for this design, I've already picked out my design. You can put whatever you want on yours. I will talk about stabilizing and what works best and all of that. But for this one, I'm gonna use a design that's from Tattered Stitches. It is a gnome in like a hot cocoa mug. It looks so cute and it's a circular design with wording and it's a sketch design. So if you haven't done a sketch design and put mylar or cello behind it, that is a really fun thing to do. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna recommend that. If you haven't tried it, it's pretty cool. I bought this cello wrap on Amazon. I'm gonna use that. Kimberbell also has a mylar pack. And if you have that, you could use that, but cello will work just fine as well. Um, I will add a link here to the one that I found on Amazon. It's a pretty good size roll of it, so I'll be able to use it for a while. I'm pretty happy about that. Um, but And you can use it, of course, for gift wrap and such. But it works pretty good on embroidery. I've done it and I really like that. So when you put something like that underneath a sketch design, you can see that it's got like kind of a rainbow feel to it. And so it makes it just really pretty. It makes the design really fun. It has to be on a sketch design because if it's a filled design, you won't see it. But on a sketch design, it's really fun to put something like that underneath the design. So I will show you how to do that if you choose. Um, what else? Let's see. Like I said, the design is from Tattered Stitches, the one that I chose. It's a gnome. Gnomes are on sale this week for a couple more days. Um, if you miss the sale, I'm sorry, but um, Tattered Stitches have has lots of really cute designs. So that's what I'm going to use for this one. There's lots of cute designs. You can use whatever you would like, um, but a sketch design will be fun to be able to get that iridescent color behind the stitching. So that's what I'm going to try. Um, since we have some time before our first project starts. There's a little bit of a delay on it. And so I'm going to utilize my time and get a sweater embroidered. And that's always so fun. So I know that you'll enjoy doing that with me. So I wanted to give you some information so that you can get prepared and get your sweater, get a design, get some cello or mylar if you want to give that a try. And let's go ahead and start getting ready to be able to embroider on a sweater. 
Hey everyone, so I am going to go over step by step how to make this shirt and how to use that cello which makes it so very uh, sparkly and pretty. But before we do that, so one thing is I already made my shirt. It's so cute. I love it, love it, love it. Really cute design, really cute shirt from Amazon. Um, and like I said, I got the design from Tattered Stitchers. So I, Stitches, I put um, cello behind it and it is just so sparkly. I'll show you a picture where you can zoom in and, and see. Um, it's just super sparkly. So very fun, but I wanna go over the basics. So I've done a lot of videos on how to embroider successfully on a shirt without getting any puckering, um, but I'm going to just do another one for those that haven't jumped in and tried it yet. So let's just talk about the basics. So there is this old adage that says, if you wear it, don't tear it. I think that's what it is. If you wear it, don't tear it. So in other words, don't use tear away. I use tear away. I swear by it. I, when I first started embroidering, I pretty much started with shirts because I was making tons of different shirts for my grandkids. And I used cutaway like they recommended at the time. And oh, they're super cute when you first are finished, but then you throw it in the washing machine and it looks awful every other time. And so I really didn't like it. I was really not happy with it. So I did a lot of research and tried a lot of different things. And this technique that I have come up with, I'm telling you, it works. And you'll see in the Christian Creates group on Facebook, people post photos all the time of shirts and sweaters that they've made and oh this works so perfectly and no puckers and Kristen's way is great so I highly recommend it try it at least and see what you think so I do use tearaway so I use tearaway stabilizer it's medium weight tearaway I use that in my hoop all right so in my hoop and then I always float um, that part you can you can put it in your hoop if you want you can put your sweater or shirt in your hoop but you're gonna get those hoop uh, marks that I could never get out. So I did it one time and never went back. I've floated every single time. So when you float, you're going to use pins. You need good pins and you need to get good at it. And it doesn't take long to get good at it. You want to put, I'll, I'll add a photo of what it looks like to have the pins all the way around, but you want it on the very, very edge of your hoop so that it's out of the way of the design. Make sure to do that. This is how to get no, no puckering at all. All right. So like I said, tear away. So I use mostly use, um, this one, um, I'll, I'll add a link for it. I don't have many links left, but, um, if, if I don't have a link that I can provide by clicking here, so click here to order some tear away, um, the links will also be underneath this video in the video notes. All right. And whenever you buy something from those Amazon links, it helps support my, my channel, makes it possible for me to keep those videos up on YouTube. YouTube and all of that it, it really helps a lot so um, tear away so this is the one I use I don't remember the brand I used to use world wiener it might still be world wiener but um, world wiener has gotten difficult to get and so I I found this one whichever it is and like I said I'll add a link um, above and also below um, this video so tear away works great medium weight tear away um, Kimberbell does have a light tear away and it works differently but it works great too so you could absolutely do that if you have Kimberbell um, light tear away on hand this actually works really well too um, you just want a tear away that is not going to be so hard that it will pull at the stitches when you're pulling it away from the design all right and this one it works a little differently than this one but it works really well both of them just a little different differently but work great all right so either one of those tear away in your stable in your hoop that is the most important thing you want tear away don't let these people tell you not to use tear away it works great all right and then the other really important thing super 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 important is you want a fusible stabilizer fusible make sure when you order it it says fusible because sometimes like you can put uh you can put in the search bar on amazon um fusible stabilizer and then ones that are not fusible come up and you click on it thinking oh this is a good deal and well it turns out it's not the right thing so make sure it is fusible and again I will add a link to the one that I'm using here hopefully if I have any links left available I can only do five links on each YouTube video so if it works I'll add it here if not it will be in the video notes so just click on that so this one is the one that I'm using I'm pretty sure it's broth broth red something like that bro thread I don't know how you pronounce it but that's the one I've been using a lot, new 
bro, bro thread. I fusible iron on. All right. I keep a little note inside of my thing. So I remember what one I'm using. I used to use world wiener and I really like world wiener, but like you said, it's hard to get lately. Sometimes I don't know why, but hard to find, especially on Amazon. Um, but that one works well as well. So I want to warn you, this is really important. You might think, oh, I've got fusible stabilizer. No problem. I've got a big, big bolt of that. Um, what is it? SF 101. Don't use it. <laughs> Don't use it on your shirts. It's great for quilting. It's great for other projects. Same with the, the Kimberbell fusible backing. Great, great, great on most projects, but not for shirts. Believe me, not for shirts. I'll show you why. All right. Um, so this one is the Kimberbell fusible backing. I think that's what it's called. Fusible backing. Yep. So see it. It's nice. It works great on quilting works great on a lot of projects. Same with the, um, SF 101 works great, really great on, on almost everything, but not on shirts. And here's why here's the difference. Hopefully you can see this. So here's the SF 101, which is very similar to the Kimberbell fusible backing. Here is the bra thread. Can you see the difference? See how this is super opaque? It works great. It's sticky. It's all of that, but it's not, you want something that is not opaque. All right. And the reason is because you'll see it on the top of your shirt. You will see it. You'll see the outline of it. You don't want something that's super opaque. So uh, uh, Floriani, when I first started embroidering shirts, Floriani had a tan um, fusible stabilizer and that worked really well too. And I bought that for a long time, but it's quite expensive and quite difficult to get. Um, so I'm not using that anymore. I switched over to this one that's super easy to get on Amazon and it is thin and not opaque and it sticks really well in it. No puckering. I'm telling you, that's the most important thing. No puckering. So that the mixture of tearaway in your hoop and fusible stabilizer on the inside of your shirt, that is what makes it work. All right. And depending on your stitch count, you want to check your stitch count. If you're doing a shirt that has like a hundred thousand stitch count, then you want to add another layer of tearaway underneath your hoop. All right. But in most cases, you don't even need that. It's going to work. So the other really important thing, so after you, and I'll add a picture so that you can see what it looks like. After you're all done with your embroidery, you are going to heat it up. So you're going to iron your design. And if you have any, um, specialty things on it, then you'll have to cover it with like a, um, I use a, a pillowcase, uh, whatever sort of, um, cover mat, whatever to, to keep some elements safe. If you're using any spe special elements, um, like vinyl, which I do use vinyl on shirts and you just have to be careful when you're ironing it. But after you're all done with your embroidery, all right, once you've got all of that really cute little gnome on there or whatever you're putting on your shirt, then you want to iron it again. And what you're doing is you're warming up this fusible stabilizer. And once it's fully warm and you might need to do it in parts rather than like the whole design, you could do the right corner and then the left corner just keep you want it warmed up and once you warm it up then you go inside of your shirt on the inside of your shirt and you pull that fusible stabilizer all the way to the stitching and then trim don't trim super close to the stitching don't cut your stitches but you want to pull it back enough like an eighth of an inch cut cut that so that it is just around your design all right so you don't want to leave a big piece of fusible stabilizer in there it will actually look like it's kind of funny when you first finish your project it may look like you have puckering and all that is is the fusible stabilizer with the stitches and it's like pulled in but as soon as you pull back that fusible stabilizer while it's warm you can do it when it's not warm but then it leaves some of that little sticky stuff on the inside of your shirt and that's not a big deal but it's not super comfortable so um, I always just warm it up and that makes it so that you can pull that back and then trim it away and it's just around your design and it's it no puckering it's just perfect I'm telling you give it a try it's so easy it works really really good so that's the big thing is fusible stabilizer on the inside and it's so soft. All of my shirts, I mean, you've seen in all of my videos, I'm always wearing embroidered shirts and they all have this on the inside of the shirt and it's just soft. You don't feel it and it crumples up nicely versus that cutaway. Oh my goodness. If you're using regular cutaway, this is a cutaway, but it's a mesh fusible stabilizer. All right. Um, but if you're doing that, you can, it's like, 
mm, it's not a good feeling. This is soft and it's so thin and it's it works. It works really, really well. So give this a try for sure. Um, so the other thing I want to mention, a few things. So your shirt, um, if you're in a cold climate like me, you probably have some nice thick shirts, sweaters, whatever, and stabilizing obviously is really easy on those thick things. So I have this sweater that I'm still waiting to do, and this is, it's thick, right? So it's easy to stabilize doing the tear away in the hoop and the fusible stabilizer on the inside. That's all I'm going to need. All right. But then I also do a lot of shirts, summer shirts, because it gets hot here in Idaho too. I do a lot of shirts like this that are just crazy thin, like almost see-through type of thin. All right. So on something like that, on a thin one, you might need a little bit more stabilizer. I actually have not found, unless I'm doing like a high stitch count, that combination of the tearaway and the fusible works great, even on this, all right? Even on these really thin ones, it, it will work just fine. Okay, so that's good. But again, if you have a high stitch count, like check your stitch count. I'd say anything over like 30,000, you might want to add a layer of tearaway underneath the hoop while it's stitching, all right? And then you just tear it away after. So one other thing is on that tearaway, you are going to use tweezers. You tear away all around the design first after you're all done embroidering, not until after you're all done. You're going to tear away all of that, that extra stabilizer. And then in most cases, like especially on appliques, you can just use tweezers and pull off all the extra um, tear away stabilizer. And everything that stays is underneath the stitches. So that's why you're not getting that crimpling up and um, looking awful after, after it's been washed. It looks really good because you're not seeing a lot of that. In a stitch design like this one, or not stitch, sketch design, in a sketch design like the one that I'm wearing today, there is some tear away that stays because you want to keep it with the sketch design that's a little harder. Um, but I'll show you a picture and you'll see it's there's just little bits and you can use your tweezers and get most of it out and it just works really great so definitely give that a try so again um, thin or thick doesn't matter this technique works that's one thing um, the other thing I want to mention is use your hoop I like to go big people ask me well what size design should I use I like big to me go big or go home in my opinion I do the bigger design so like this one um, this tattered stitchers stitches I think it was about seven inches and I, I made it bigger I think I did like eight inch design so I like that on my shirts and I wear size small shirts so um, you don't want it to be this tiny little thing or maybe you do it's totally up to you right I mean you could do something that's just a little design in a pocket type of thing whatever is going to work for you is totally fine um but for uh infant in like a small little onesie i would probably do a four by four anything anything bigger than that any child larger than that i'll do a five by seven or a six by ten on mine i always do at least an eight by eight i like them big i think that they're really cute that way but again personal choice right so i often use my nine and a half by nine and a half hoop or my eight by eight hoop um, for my designs and this is important I'm sure you've already figured this out but these notches that are on the top and the bottom that will help you to center your shirt you want your shirt centered in the hoop correctly where you're using these to line it up so that the design will be straight all right that's really important um, if you don't like pinning you can use a magnetic hoop I have a wonderful magnetic hoop but the only thing is it doesn't have those notches. I put these little stickers on here to help. And what I do is I write on my um, tearaway. I put a line. I draw a straight line on the tearaway. And I help use that to line it up. But it is a little harder to get your shirt straight in a magnetic hoop. So I just want to warn you on that. But it definitely can be done. I've done it lots of times. Um, and pinning, it's a little bit difficult the first time. You have to get used to it. You're just pushing that. You want a good, reliable pin, though. A strong pin, those long ones that are thinner might be a little bit more difficult. These are pretty pretty strong little pins. You probably can't see that. There you go. All right, so anyway, this works. And you want lots of pins, lots of pinning, all right? That helps keep it so that you're not getting any puckering because you're holding down that fabric in a really nice, secure way. All right, so that's the basics. I wanted to go over the stabilizers and the technique that I use, tear away in your hoop. Absolutely tear away in your hoop and fusible stabilizer on the inside. And like I said, I'll show you what it looks like after it's all done. And it, you're going to love it. It's, 
all of my shirts i love them they come out of the the washer and dryer like this they don't have to iron them they always just look great all the time so um tear away and fusible stabilizer i highly recommend it i hope you'll give it a try and tell me what you think
quick reminder, don't forget to subscribe to this channel. It helps the channel somehow. I don't know why I don't understand the whole uh, YouTube analytics, but if you subscribe, then you will know whenever you receive, whenever a new video is posted. So you click on that little bell and it gives you a little notification. I think on your phone, it'll like little vibrate saying, Hey, Kristen creates posted a new video so that you'll know. And there's a lot of people that say, Oh, where would I find a shirt? And there, there is a little search bar in the Kristen creates YouTube page on a computer. I don't know how to find it on a phone, but on a computer, there's a search bar right at the top of my channel. Um, and you can search shirt and it, all the videos will come up, but now here's the newest one. So if you are subscribed, then you will already receive notification to tell you that this video is up. And just a reminder that whenever you click on a Amazon link um, to purchase something from that I'm recommending as far as a shirt or stabilizer or whatever it is, that it does help the channel. If you would rather um, support the channel with a donation, PayPal and Venmo links are underneath this video and that is super appreciated very much. Whatever helps keep these videos going, right? And our next group project is starting very soon. Look at this shirt that I just got from Amazon. It is thin, so um, easy to wear all during the year. And isn't it cute? I can't wait. I haven't even decided what I'm going to put on it. But I will add a link to this sweater. This It's got a hoodie on it, kangaroo pocket, and it's not super long. I like the ones that aren't terribly long. So this is a cute idea, too, to embroider on.